Buhari has charged Nigerian army and other security agencies in Nigeria to come up with a proper strategy that will finally end series of insecurity in Nigeria. Speaking at the 2017 Chief of Army Staff Conference held in Nibadu, the state capital, President Buhari lauded the contribution of the Nigerian army to peace and stability in the country. Addressing officers and men of the Nigerian army, as well as other Nigerians at the conference, President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented at the event by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Lonisaki, stated that Nigerian army must continue to uphold the territorial integrity of Nigeria. For this administration remain the entrenchment of security, fight corruption, and restructuring the economy to ensure a steady and sustainable economic growth. Presenting detailed activities of the Nigerian army, its successes and challenges in the outgoing year, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukob Ratai, informed the gathering that the army under his control has been able to contain insurgents, militants, cattle rustlers, and other forms of security forces against the unity and progress in 2017. In the hosting of Nigerian Army strategic level events, the first, second, third, and fourth quarters of 2017 were indeed very eventful, eventful and instructive. In the separate remarks at the conference, Governor of Oyo State, Abiola Jumobi, lauded the contribution of the Nigerian army to peace and unity in the land, calling on them not to rest on their oars. For a appraiser of the army's operational efficiency cannot be more appropriate than at this point in time in our nation's history. And now the federal government has reiterated its commitment to rebuilding the Nigerian economy through the non-oil sectors, addressing a team of investors from the Republic of France at the Finance Ministry headquarters. The Ministry of Finance, Kemi Adyoshu, said the Buhari-led administration is doing all it could to drift from oil mono economy to develop non-oil sector such as agri, solid minerals, as well as a tax regime for economic growth and sustainability. Mrs. Adeoshun said diversifying the country's fiscal revenue and improving tax collection rate is a dependable flow of income that is needed for the support of the infrastructure state in Nigeria. Growth. We see growth along a number of sectors. We see growth in health uh, due simply to the sheer size of our population. Uh, we see growth in, in services. We see growth in banking. We see opportunities in manufacturing and in power. In fact, there's pretty much no sector of Nigerian economy that doesn't have growth potential. Moving on, Lagos State Governor Akiumi Ambode on Monday presented the year 2018 budget proposal of 1.046 trillion naira to the House of Assembly, which a pledge that his administration will make every effort to complete all ongoing projects as well as initiate new ones. Governor Ambode, who christened the 2018 budget as Budget of Progress and Development, said it to be used to consolidate on the achievements recorded in infrastructure, education, transportation, security, and health sectors. And now we bring you the report. Highlighting the key components of the budget, Governor Akiomi Ambode said capital expenditure would gulp over 600 billion naira, while 347 billion naira would be dedicated to recurrent expenditure, representing a capital recurrent ratio of 67 to 33 percent and a 28.6 percent increase over the year 2017 budget. He said that despite the achievement recorded in 2017, there was still much work ahead, assuring that government would not relent in its efforts to give residents the best. The proposed budget is christened Budget of Progress and Development. It has a size of 1 trillion, 46 billion, 121 million, 181,680 naira. The budget will be used to consolidate on infrastructure, education, transportation, traffic management, security and health, with an added emphasis on mandatory capacity building for civil servants, all teachers in public secondary and primary schools, officers in the health service sector, 
and women and youth empowerment alongside our medium and small micro-sized entrepreneurs. In the area of job creation, the governor said government would construct an ICT-focused incubator center in Yaba, commence the development of Igbonla Light Industrial Park, as well as the provision of additional small-scale industrial estate at Shala. In the area of job creation, we will construct the, an ICT-focused incubator center in Yaba, while the development of Imota and Ibola Light Industrial Park, as well as the provision of additional small-scale industrial estates in Shala, will commence. The State Employment Trust Fund will disburse more funds to Lagosians to support business and stimulate the economy. Receiving the budget, the Speaker of the House, Honorable Muda Shirobasa, commended the governor for faithfully executing the year 2017 budget, saying the positive impact of such had been felt across the state with various projects. Around this time last year, His Excellency Mr. Ambody was here to present the year 2017 budget, itemizing his projections for the outgoing year. Today, with the remarkable support of this House, we are all witnesses to the jobs done so far as regards infrastructural renewal and wealth creation. The event was attended by dignitaries in the state, including members of the State Executive Council, led by the Deputy Governor, Dr. Idiat Adebule, members of the National Assembly from Lagos State, party chieftains, traditional rulers, religious leaders, among others. And away from that, some leaders in the Southwest Zone have fought at the recent pronouncement by the River State Governor, Yesong Wike, that no chairmanship candidate from the zone can stabilize the People's Democratic Party, PDP. In an interview with Galaxy News in, uh, in Lagos on Monday, a former lawmaker, Femi Okurumu, a Yoruba leader, Ayo Adebanjo, and a ferry ferry spokesperson, Yinka Odumaki, described the pronouncement as unfortunate and ill-timed. They said the PDP made a strategic mistake for neglecting the microzone formula which would have helped the party in the zone. Frankly, but the judge is my friend, and I have known him for a long time. So I, I don't want to be too caustic about him. But I don't, uh, I don't believe his comments are appropriate. You mean Wicke's comments? No, but but the, but the judge's comments in terms of why he withdrew, I don't think they are appropriate. Because he was trying to make it a Yoruba issue. That, you know. Well, I think the comment by Governor River State on the Yoruba, uh, I will not say this is an insult, but it's quite in, uh, in politic, and impolite, inconsiderate, and no serious politician what his thoughts. Who understand the dynamics of their politics who have made such a statement against his own. My own reaction is that is the main body of the party that made a, that committed a strategic error. By not, by not keeping the microzone, that's all. Governor Wike's comment is coming against the background of some Southwest PDP leaders and delegates who cried foul of being shortchanged in the microzoning formula, which was jettisoned prior to the chairmanship election of the party that elected Uche Secondus as the new chairman. And now, a Southwest leader, elder statesman, and former lawmaker in the Second Republic, Nkwo Nabuchi, says the end of the Fourth Republic is near, following the numerous anomaly in government at all levels. Nabuchi, who spoke to Galaxy News on the state of the nation in Oka, North local government area in Anambra State, said a new Nigeria where, regardless of political affiliation, will enjoy the dividends of democracy and good governance will emerge. The guilty will be flushed out. But those with clean hands will be spared. So you may have a mixture of if I'm good, I'm spared. If I'm bad, I'm, I'm gone. Expressing hope for all the grave Nigerians, the Southeast Elder Statement said there will be a spiritual cleansing of Nigeria. I think that none of the current and past leaders with unclean hands will be spared from the great calamity that will befall the enemies and looters of the country. He, however, charged Nigerians to be optimistic of the good days ahead, 
stressed that their cry has been heard. If the if devastation, the calamity comes, there'll be fear on the, the on the Nigerian nation. And everybody will be careful. Because you don't need direction is coming. Still to come, protesters and still on the news, the Lagos State Police Command said it apprehended a total of 39 suspects between the 20th of November and 10th of December 2017 for their involvement in kidnapping, drug peddling and armed robbery. Lagos State Commissioner of Police Edgar Mohimi disclosed this on Monday while parading the suspect at the command headquarters. Our correspondent Joseph Oko has more on this report. CP Edgar Imohimi said the feat was achieved through community policing and safety partnership project of the Lagos State Police Command as directed by the Inspector General of Police. Following President Mohamed Buhari's last visit to Kanu, the police boss said its covert operatives successfully intercepted hard drugs stored in Bible-like materials worth 250 million naira. At the preliminary test of the substance gave positive results for benzoglycolin, otherwise known as cocaine, a street value, an estimated street value of well over 250 million naira. Other suspects arrested and paraded include the alleged kidnappers of a seven-year-old boy, suspected killers of an Ikorudu-based pastor who was murdered in cold blood on the 25th of November, and suspected members of the notorious Bado gang. And the criminals gained entry into the deceased person's room by carefully removing the glass louvers on the window. Number two, the assailants used concrete grinding stone to smash the skulls of the deceased. Abdul Razak Yahaya and one Abubaka Tenimu, both male from Ibeshe and Ikorodu respectively have been arrested in connection with the crime. Galaxy News spoke to the mother of the abducted seven-year-old, his kidnappers, who confessed to have sold him to an unknown orphanage home in Abia State for 120,000 naira and other suspects. I'm not feeling fine that time. I went inside, go and take tea and draw, so I now come back. I'm looking for my son. How many days did you take him? For how long? Was he away? Two months. Two months. Two months. Two months. Two months. Yes. The first one, he said that he has problem. Then the first one, he collected 190,000. Bam. Second one, he said I have another problem. Burial something. He collected another 120,000. It's 120. They gave you 120. Yes. 120 for what? Because the boy said he was he needed money. Not for that the boy will survive, not to sell the boy that he needed money and who will take care of the boy. So I'm in front of my brother's shop when I want to lock the shop. They said they're looking for my brother. Where is he? I said I don't know. Items recovered by the police include 40 arms, 71 ammunitions, 18 cartridges, among others. Joseph Oko, Galaxy News, Lagos. Now, days after the NSAS campaign raged on social media, scores of Nigerians on Monday converged on Freedom Park in Lagos to partake in one of several rallies holding nationwide.